In our previous video, we did a review on the Y20SG and also the Y2021. Still need time to get used to that. And also, in the past, we've also done a review on the Vivo X60 and X60 Pro. So these two are clearly very separate market, right? The X60 Pro and the X60 is a bit more higher end and the Y20 SG and the Y20 2021 is a bit on the lower budget end. But we're not here today to talk about those two. We are here today to talk about something in between Vivo's mid-range, their flagship killer if you might say that way, the Vivo V21 and the Vivo V21e. But wait, you might ask that, why, why do we have two phones? Well, that is why this video is here today. We're about to unbox it and we're gonna check out the difference between these two products. I will leave the bigger brother right here, which is the V21. According to Vivo, V21 supposedly offer a better specs compared to the V21e. Inside the box, I do believe it comes with the standard stuff like your USB port, your charging brick, your jelly case. As I said in previous videos, I love me some jelly case. <laughs> We do have a dongle that comes with the V21 because unfortunately, sad news, V21 doesn't have an earphone jack. However, the V21e do have it. I don't get it, man. Why, why do people keep getting rid of all these ports for my phones? <laughs> According to the spec sheets, both have the same RAM and also the same internal storage. There's definitely gonna be difference in performance between these two. We're gonna talk about that a bit later, not now, because right now I wanna talk about design. As you guys can see, these two right here clearly have different designs. This one, I would say the V21 has a lot of a cleaner look. The V21e, it does have a little bit of a more high funky kind of vibe into it. It definitely looks like glass, but to my surprise, it's actually plastic. I like how all this mid-range phone right now, they're trying to give you that premium, a bit of that high-end feel to it, right? When I touch this phone, when I first grab it, I'm like, are you sure this is actually a mid-range phone? Because it certainly doesn't feel like one. For the V21, this unit, I got the dusk blue color. And as for the V21e, however, it's called the diamond flare. As you guys can see, it's a bit of a dead flare. But for me, myself, I don't particularly like it because it's a bit disruptive in my eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap an orange casing in it. When we talk about designs, we usually take into account like, where is the fingerprint scanner? Is it on the side? Is it at the back? No, it's under the display. It's game over, man. It's the new world. However, is it secure? Should everyone be concerned about this compared to traditional fingerprint scanner? Well, I'm here to tell you my time with this fingerprint scanner. I've tested it with my friends. I tell, hey, can you try this out? Does it work on your finger? It never worked on them, but it only works for me every single time. It gives me a smooth transition to talk about the main topic as well, which is the display. Vivo included an AMOLED display this time around. However though, the biggest difference is that the V21, it has a 90 hertz display and also a HDR10+. For the Vivo V21e, it's a standard AMOLED HDR10 only. You might ask, what's the difference between 90 hertz display and a standard 60 hertz? 90 hertz display gives this like, ugh, you know, it makes you feel smooth and buttery and the whole animation is just a lot snappier. I love it, I enjoy it. And also HDR. For the V21, it has a HDR10+, and as for the V21e, it has a normal standard HDR10. I personally enjoy both of this phone due to the fact that you get a 20 by 9 aspect ratio on a 6.4 inch AMOLED display. You can never go wrong with that. Next highlight, the camera. Why do we have such a huge camera bump on a phone like this? For me personally, it kind of ruined the aesthetic, but nah, I'm fine with it as well, as long as I get good quality images. Okay, so we're finally outdoor. We finally got the opportunity to play around with this little cameras right here. Bring it closer. Okay, so I've got these two results of this macro lens. So the reason why I like taking photos of like random objects like this is because it gives a lot of texture. Surprisingly on the V21, it looks a bit washed out. And the V21e, I feel like it did a really good job at managing the processing right here. For the rear end camera, it's 64 megapixel on their main lens. 64, you can capture a lot of detail in that. And I'm really impressed. 
snap. The V21 had this sort of like fade filter that they put on. If I were to zoom in right here, you can really see where the high megapixel actually serves its purpose. Moving on, we're gonna try out the portrait feature on this phone. I am liking the V21 more, mainly because I feel like color accuracy wise, the V21e definitely has it, but somehow it got a bit too saturated. But in terms of the bokeh, the depth level, I feel like the score in this one, they managed to detect the age very nicely, smoothly. In terms of the setup of the camera, they both have the same. However, the V21 includes an optical image stabilization. So you guys know that really helps in terms of making videos, taking really nice photos, ensure that everything is just stable. For the V21e, however, it does come with a gyro EIS, which stands for Electronic Image Stabilization, which is a software try to stabilize the footage for you. Of course, optical image stabilization is always, always way better than EIS. The selfie camera is where it separates these two phones. I've tested it, I've tried it, they both give different results. Now, why is that? The V21 having a dual LED flash right here. It always improves your shot during nighttime. I'm amazed by the first time I tried it. This is where the V21 shine, like I said. I promise you guys, it's really cool. There's a dark LED right here, the dual flashlight right here. So we're gonna give that a try. The V21 definitely processes it a lot better with the, uh, with the flashlight. I definitely like it with the flashlight. And on top of that, the front camera, it has 44 megapixels. Can you imagine the amount of details you get? With a lot of phones out there right now, they give you 12 megapixel, eight megapixel on the camera. But this one, 44 megapixel, are you kidding? I wanna talk about gaming, right? On these two brothers right here, which one performs better, which one is nicer? So the V21e, it has a different chipset, which is the Snapdragon, right? And this one, it uses the Dimensity 800U. Does it affect gameplay? Yes, it does, but it's not too drastic. The second point I wanna bring out is the display that you get on both of these phones. This one comes with a 60 hertz, However, this one comes with a 90 hertz. 90 hertz display will always reign supreme. I played a lot of MOBA games, but as soon as I hopped on, I just feel like I got better at the game. I was owning some noobs. They have this thing called the eSport mode. When you switch that on, it's supposed to block all notification, you know, get rid of unnecessary power usage and focus everything on the gaming experience. I have no complaint about it at all because the games that I played, they're high intensity game. I pushed it all the way to the maximum setting and it still is able to perform on its best. Also, in previous video, Y20SG and Y20 2021, I did mention about Vivo's very own software called the Multi Turbo. They didn't miss it out on this one as well. The Multi Turbo definitely did help in terms of the gaming performance, you know. If there's one thing that I do not particularly enjoy about the software that Vivo give is this AI personal assistant that they give inside the phone called Jovi Home. So for me, it's a bit intrusive, the fact that it needs to constantly remind me about the weather, the kind of things I should check out. It's, it keeps suggesting and suggesting. However, you do have the option to switch it off. For example, like right here, notification management, weather reminders, rest reminders, event alerts. It is a personal assistant to begin with. If you are already in the Vivo ecosystem, I don't see this as a problem or an inconvenience, but for me, it definitely is something that Vivo could perhaps improve on. Speaking of media consumption, the speaker, what's the quality that we're getting? Is it loud enough? Is it mono speaker? Well, unfortunately, it's mono speaker. I don't understand why. Especially when this phone is really good at gaming. Imagine if you have a stereo speaker setup a dual speaker setup. But anyway, we're gonna test out what the speaker sounds like. I'm gonna play this song called Ketupat Lo-Fi. <laughs> That's for the Vivo V21e. I'm gonna try out on the Vivo V21 instead. Okay. It's really loud for a mono speaker. But then again, I don't recommend going full max volume on this thing because I did hear a little bit of cracks in it. I have to give the point to the V21e here solely because they included a headphone jack. 
the V21 did definitely come with a dongle, but me no likey. <laughs> In this slim design, how much battery are you getting? 4,000 milliamp power battery, non-removable, pretty standard stuff. But this battery comes with a 33 watt flash charging. On the advertisement, it says to get to 63%, it'll take about 30 minutes or so, which I can approve. I charged this phone yesterday at 10% and it took about 50 minutes to 60 minutes to get it to full and I was really amazed by how fast that was. And in terms of usage, on a day-to-day -day usage, screen on time I get about, with light media browsing I get about 8 to 9 hours and with intense gaming I take about 5 to 6 hours to get it to low. I feel like they did really well on that multi-turbo, that's one feature that I wish to see in a lot more phones, you know. Power management is key right there. So with all that being said, right, with the price and the features that you're getting on this phone, who is this for? I am. I won't hesitate to grab the V21 because mainly the aesthetic suits my kind of style. I really like the black color, the AMOLED display. I'm a content creator. I talk in front of cameras a lot and the selfie camera on the V21 is an absolute monster. If you're more of a hip, and funky kind of person, definitely the V21e, especially with the diamond flare back. If it suits your taste, then this one is definitely for you. And if you want to sacrifice a little bit of that aesthetic, definitely 21e is your go-to choice. That's it for me today. Definitely stay tuned on this channel because we have so much more product to check out because the choppy review, we check for you. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.